The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? All right. It is going down tonight. I got my good friend, my brother, my homie, my dog, <laughs> Sonny Sandoval, the lead singer from the band POD and co-founder of the Whosoever's. Sonny, dude, it's been a long time since you've been on the show. Mm -hmm. I think you were on when we first started. Yeah. Over at the other studio. Over at uh, um, K-Wave. Yep. It's yeah. been a minute. Dude, it's been, actually, we were on the radio about a month ago, and they said that was our sixth year of being on. Oh, wow. Is that gnarly? <laughs> time flies. <laughs> Seems like you just started this thing like I know. <laughs> yesterday. I know it's crazy. We, we and Sean were tripping out. They were telling us it's like the anniversary, and we just can't believe what God's done over the yeah. years. It started with one station, and now it's on over a hundred. And it's just, it's just cool to see. And people are still calling us up and like, hey, we want to pick you up over here, yeah. or pick you up over there. And That's it's just been up. cool because um, it's been a a show that just disciples people. And I love having different people on the show, like tastemakers and cultures, mm -hmm. like someone like yourself. Like you're out in the mainstream. You're a band. You've been doing it forever, mm -hmm. but yet you're a believer, and you're you're just living the Great Commission where God has you. Because yeah. a lot of people think if you become a Christian, you have to become a pastor, right. or or a, a, an evangelist, or work in the church to actually do ministry. Right. But what I love about <laughs> our relationship and our relationship goes way back. And there's, I mean, you've you've obviously you've you've been a big influence in my life. You know. Um, it's in the book, you know, talking about how you've <laughs> impacted uh, my life and stuff. Yeah. But it's been cool just to watch your life and how you've uh, just been living for Christ in the world, not of it, but really doing the messy ministry of of, of Christ. And, um, you know, tell just tell the listeners basically how you even, you know, just a rough overview, how you got into the band. Because mm -hmm. I, want, I want to talk about how you got into the band and the purpose and then just how God's been using you and everything you've been working on ever since to yeah, bring yeah. you up to now it's it's a long story but yeah um I, I wasn't raised christian you know what i mean but always had respect for god um god is in an, is he's woven into my my family line you know what i mean the old uh my grandmother from italy catholic you know what i mean yeah just uh i've always had uh, a respect for god i just didn't didn't know him you know and then it God just started to pick off people one at a time in my in my family, and it was real, you know, coming from a broken family and, and seeing a lot of things and just neighborhood stuff. Um, God was, um, he was constant, you know what I mean? And, and he became real. It wasn't just hearing a story about him or, you know, going to um, Sunday school. Mm -hmm. I started to see him become real in my family's life. And then when my mom was diagnosed with leukemia and she would, you know, Soon after, um, go to be with the Lord. I watched her just praise God through all that, and that was like basically as she's about to pass yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. She knew she was gonna you die. Knew it was real at that and point. And then it was like, dude, she's <laughs> yeah. Anybody at that point would just lose lose themselves, you know. But yeah. she, um, she fell more in love with God, you know, with Jesus, and so that was real to me. And so, you know, pretty much on her dying bed, it was like, okay, I need to make a de decision. What am I gonna do? And I, at, at the time, I think it was more just uh, for her, mm. you know. Um, she wanted me to know her Jesus. So I think at the time it was more like, okay, Lord, if, if she goes, you know, we need to settle, settle some scores, you know? So I pretty much asked my, or asked Jesus to come into my life the same day my mom passed away, you know, in the parking lot of this, this hospital. And then I went and whispered into her ear and I said, go be with Jesus. And it wasn't much after that, that she took her last breath. So from that point on, it was like, okay, I was 19 at the time still trying to grow up that's that's a young you know looking back at being 19 and losing your mom that's that's a pretty gnarly age too i mean at any age to lose your yeah. mom but you're you're in that that 19 you're just leaving high school trying to figure yeah, things yeah. out still kind of getting into trouble a little and you bit. want to bounce <laughs> ideas back off your mom and you know what i mean <laughs> yeah for sure so that must i mean at the time i thought i was grown and yeah. knew it all you know yeah. what i mean but but you look back and you're like oh yeah it was really was kind of lost at the time you know mm -hmm. but um you know at that point it was like okay when she passed it was like okay I gotta, I'm serious about this I want to know this Jesus that my mom knew and so really I just started to um read my bible and go to church and 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 you know try to give up things that were in my in my life at the time that 
I knew probably was wasn't good for me, and but it was just a it was a it was a relationship, you know, um, and at that time um, my cousin the you know he's still in my band the drummer Wub and Marcos they were in another thrash band I used to go to parties with them and where they play, um, and they would you know they were Christians, mm -hmm. um, but they had asked me to to join the band which was far left for me you know wasn't something I ever planned or mm -hmm. even like doing at the time I don't like being in front of cameras or uh, I'm not really about the me show yeah. you know you're, I mean? yeah you're on, you're like low-key yeah mm -hmm. but when they first asked me I kind of laughed I thought it was a joke and um, <laughs> but then some things happened you know where uh, you know but bef before that I kind of really I really did just ask God I said just I just want you to use my life whatever that means you know, here I am falling in love with, with Jesus and, and, and knowing, you know, tr starting to learn what it means to walk with God. And, and then the next step is whatever you see, God, whatever, whatever's good in me, use it. How do you know that that was the call from God? Because a lot of people ask, you know, because people want to know what the, when they give their life to Christ, the yeah. whole thing is they want to know what that call is. You know, how do I know I'm in God's will? Yeah. How do I know that God's calling me to something? Like, how do you know that it was... I, I think for me, even at the time, it's not that I even knew. It was just more, I knew that it was all new. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I should just be quiet and sit at God's feet and just kind of soak it all in. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And, and then in the same time was just more or less learning how to live, knowing that my mom's not here anymore, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was still processing all of that. Mm -hmm. um, you, know. you were getting discipled, basically, just kind of learning the, who, who Christ yeah. was. I mean, yeah. I was working. I was kind of yeah. just, I was just walking yeah and um and at the time i knew like i said it was nothing that i wanted to do be in this band but um i was praying about it and and um at the time i had uh taken taken some time off work and went to do landscaping uh, with my uncle up at in and out burger up in mm -hmm. fresno and the wednesday night came and we were like oh let's set up a, a bible study we went to the local calvary chapel fresno and there was nobody there um and at the time, here I am praying about, dude, am I supposed to be in this band? Like, what's mm -hmm. going on? And then uh, we're in, we're inside the the church, and then um, two guys walk in, and it was the drummer and the bass foot, bass player for this band called the Crucified. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I, uh, you know, I don't know Christian music. I still don't know Christian music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was, just, but I knew the Crucified. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, they were playing for opening up for like Pantera. They were doing all kinds of. They were in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, that's sick. Yeah, and I yeah. knew of them from. Just, I didn't know that. From just going, I mean, they they were Christians, but it was more, mm. it was a scene at the time that, mm. because they were awesome, you know what I mean? Yeah. They yeah. were drawing um, people that weren't saved. Yeah. And I had seen them a few times in, in concert, and I was always kind of, you know, kind of mesmerized by mm. them, um, just that how bold they were about their faith. Um, and so here I am at this Fresno Calvary Chapel praying, you know, what, what, I'm, what I'm supposed to do. And then here walks in these two guys, and I'm just, and then we end up talking with them. Oh, and then it was just like, it, you know, it just felt like that was confirmation. And then um, my cousin and I went back to the motel after that before work. And then um, we started writing lyrics for the first song. That's so so I just, you know, I just kind yeah. of, and again, it goes back to my story even um, beforehand. I, I was at a crucified concert when my mom was back into the hospital and right, right before she passed away. And so there, there's... It's more to the story, yeah, but yeah. it yeah, was all those God. Divine appointments. It's almost like there's just you know we, we talk about signs and wonders. Mm -hmm, it's yep. these things where God, you know, I might not have figured out unless these things happen, and it was just kind of obvious that this was in a coincidence. That's what I call uh, you know moving how God works supernatural, just in a natural yeah. realm. It just seems so natural the way yeah. it's all laid out, but let yeah, God's behind the scenes, right, right. and He's the divine <laughs> chess player, and He's like. Putting yeah. the pieces together. And I like and when that works that way for me because yeah. we're too busy trying to figure things out. And like, where are you, Lord? And yeah. God's like, dude, didn't you see all these things I'm, I'm putting in your path, you know? It's so true. We could complicate things so much. And God, what are you trying to say? And he's yeah. just like, dude, I'm <laughs> doing it. it. I'm doing it. I'm I'm showing you. Yeah. And that's that's just convicting even for, for me and in, in the place in my life right now. I'm constantly going, God, what do you want to do? What do you, and, but then I'm kind of like sit back. And it's like. Then last night, yesterday, I was just like, I gotta sit back for a minute and like kind of like look around what's happening. <laughs> Things are happening, yeah, but yeah. they're not like happening. Like God, what are we doing? The way you see it, the or way you I want it, exactly. Yeah. So God lines it all up. He yeah. com he confirms by the leading of the Spirit as you're in the Word. He confirms for you to be in the band, and then how yeah. did it? So what happened from there? You guys are writing. We well, 
we just started writing yeah pretty much and then you know told the other two guys in the band that it was a, a deal and and um we just started writing songs having fun but but my heart was from the beginning was like i didn't know what i was doing you know this was something new um to be behind this this mic and in front of a crowd but at the time um i really was just grateful that um i was getting to know who jesus was and that i was i was i was i was feeling it at the time you know and hey, i, w- I want to hear i want to ask you something yeah so, <laughs> as you as you because i love the way you talk about jesus so when you started discovering who Jesus was from not being a Christian until you started reading the, the red print mm-hmm, yeah. and the stories, yeah. what, like, what was your take on this, this man they call Jesus? Um, again, I, you know, I, I knew the, the, the hits and the stories, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, from going to youth group here and there or yeah. a camp here and there. Um, but I, I always just thought I was just doing it because it was the good, it was good to do, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or, mm-hmm. And even at the time, maybe it was what my, my mom wanted me to do, mm-hmm. you know, but now that she was gone, it, it was more um, personal. Mm-hmm. And so now I was responsible for my walk with God, you know, how much time I spend with the Lord, how much time I talk to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to know who the Jesus of the Bible was, not yeah. this kind of a westernized American yeah. white, blue eyed, um, you know, Jesus. And that's, I, I, and that's and that's what you see like when you're on tour and stuff. You see this 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 oh, white still. westernized. Yeah, I have, I have a problem. I mean, you look at in culture. Yeah, in in culture, they yeah. see they see Jesus as this you know American. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, white, blue eyed, um, conservative, uh, Republican, all, all these things. Uh-huh. You know, and 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 then even if they go even past that, they see it as this kind of hypocritical. Um, you know uh, what is what's what's the the crusader, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? There's, mm-hmm. there's just, they just don't have this picture of Jesus. And, and, you know, even when as a kid, I would see like the, the guys on TV and they say, you know, send in a thousand bucks and you know, your life will change or then, then Jesus will bless you. And mm-hmm. you know what I mean? All these prosperity type things. Mm-hmm. And all that it's crap. just confusing. It's yeah. confusing to a kid who's like, dude, I just, you know, it's just when, when the gospel is simple, which is Jesus came, came to love you, forgive you and set you mm-hmm. free. And it's confusing to society. People are that's confused religion. by all no, this stuff. They're confused by religion. They're, they're, and mostly they're confused by people that say, um, oh, dude, I, I am a Christian. And then it has nothing to do with Jesus, you know. So mm-hmm. um, and, and, and that happens because we're not perfect. We yeah. make mistakes. And, yeah. I, and I've lived kind of, especially being in the secular world, I've lived with that kind of um, burden on my shoulders where mm-hmm. it's like, man, I don't want to mess up because mm-hmm. someone's watching me. I don't want to stumble anybody or. You know, then you realize, like, dude, I, don't put your eyes on me, man. I'm so, mm-hmm. I'm so not perfect, yeah. you know. But, but that's why it's a, it's a journey. And that's why I was asking you is because, like, here you are, you're, you're reading about who the Jesus is, the Bible, but then you're seeing all the stuff on TV that you know, the charismania and yeah, the, yeah. the selling the holy water and yeah, no way, give a thousand dollars and your God's gonna bless you a thousand yeah. fold. Um, you and see those all people stuff. are going to be judged, you know. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, and it's we really just read, scary. read the Bible, see what Jesus yeah. did with that, those kind of people yeah. uh, in the Bible. But now, so here you are with all that being said, and then now God's pulling you into the mainstream, and you're dealing with people are looking at you now as a Christian. So they're looking at the baggage from TV, but then they're looking at you. So the way you're conducting your life, with the way you're trying to conduct yeah, your life, because yeah. we're all sinners, yeah. say by grace, obviously. And 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 God, we all have different convictions as well. Mm-hmm. That's that's the one thing that that is so. It's like because I was talking to my neighbors the other day, and you know they were asking about you know birth control or or mm-hmm. what do you think about in vitro or this and yeah, that yeah. if God doesn't and, yeah. you know, I, I, and they just really re- realize like so many people have so many different views yeah so many topics <laughs> so many topics and so many stances and everyone thinks they have the right stance right not that not my neighbors they weren't they weren't like judging or anything but they were just kind of asking these questions but here you are now you're in the mainstream in this band yeah and how is that for you to navigate through that atmosphere being a Christian and knowing like how the world thinks of Christians, but yet the, who you read about in the Bible, Jesus. Yeah, it, I mean, it was a learning lesson. You know, I, yeah. I, I never thought um, even once we got in this band, it was more just so like, dude, I just, you know, I just thought we were going to play keg parties where all my friends were at. So mm-hmm. it was like if I'm in this band screaming, you know, about Jesus or about love or, you know, whatever yeah. God's done in my life, I figured somebody's going to listen, you know, so once. Uh, you know, we got our first show outside San Diego and then, you know, then all of a sudden it happened that we can go outside the state and then we jumped on a little tour here and there, you know, so things just started to happen. Um, but then once we got signed to Atlantic, you know, obviously y- years later, 
um, you guys blew up. Then yeah, then it was a different thing. You know, all of a sudden now um, you're definitely in the public eye. You know, you're on TV and magazines. Um, you're networking with all these people in the the business, and mm-hmm. so you're. And the same time, you know, it's always in the back of my mind. I just don't, I don't want to mess up, man. I don't, <laughs> dude, I, I don't the pressure, to, huh? It's pressure, the dude. The pressure. Because then, That'd then, be then I, I remember getting to a point where it's like a lot of things happen where it's like, not that you don't care anymore, but you're like, you, you get don't over care. It. You, yeah, you're yeah. just like, I know. you're like, dude, I have to, I'm trying to live my life the best I can. And, you know, but, but not it, even through all my walk through even the, the industry is like, it's never changed that, uh, I mean, I would always take the time if someone said, hey, dude, can I talk to you about Jesus or can you pray for me? It was like, that was, if anything, that was the the best part of a lot of that stuff because I knew that's why I was here. I wasn't here because I thought I was a great singer or front man or, or I'm, yeah, I, I want to be in a band. Even now, I look for it. Almost 30 years later, I still look for the opportunities, you know, whether it's, I could be walking to sound check, you know, if a kid's outside and he's like, hey, dude, can I talk yeah. to you for a minute? It's like, I just I I want that opportunity. To, that that way it it makes all this it makes it make sense sense. Mm. I've seen it. I've seen yeah. it over and over. Um, and I've talked about it. We've talked about you on the show when you when you've been absent <laughs> many times about how you know we'll be on tour and and everyone's on the bus doing their thing or whatever, and then you're off and there's like a line to you know whatever it could be like ten people, yeah. but. Ten people when they want to talk to you about deep gnarly stuff. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a long time. That's, that's like, an all nighter. Yeah, yeah, you're talking six hours. You don't hour. want to tell them I gotta go. You're talking six <laughs> hours of like yeah. counseling. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That's a lot of people. Three yeah. people. You know, when I have like a couple people lined up, yeah. I'm like, oh dang, this is gonna mm-hmm, be. You know, mm-hmm. this is gonna be a minute. Yeah. And, and to take that time, and when people start telling you that those real stuff. Oh yeah. But I've seen you do it over and over, talking to people, praying with people, yeah. and just doing that. That Jesus ministry, it's that model. Jesus went from town to town, village to yeah, village. You, you're doing the only thing you're doing it is you're doing it in a bus and yeah. you're playing music, and then you're you're yeah. you are doing the messy ministry Jesus model. But during that time, we're gonna go to break in like ten minutes. Mm-hmm. But before that time, I want you to kind of talk about this stuff. You're out there. You're a Christian. You're not in a Christian band. You're a Christian right. in a band, and you're writing about what God's doing in your life. Yeah. You don't have to have a Christian band. Right. Everyone likes that. To label well, they, everything. They want to like, yeah. Oh, he's Christian a Christian, is Christian actor. Yeah. Or he's a they Christian. They think it gives them more legitimacy when actually it doesn't really. Yeah, the people want the titles. <laughs> it's not. You're you're a you're you're a believer. I want you to be good at what you do. If you're gonna fix my car, I don't want I don't want to see the fish on your card. I want you to fix my car the way because you're a great mechanic. I don't want to give you my work because you say you love God. It's like, dude, just be known by your actions. Be known by you know your your gift. Yeah, without the title, my question to you would be, do people call, if you didn't have your title, Christian, yeah. would people call you a Christian plumber? Would right, people right. call you a yeah. Christian? No, well, that's absurd. <laughs> I think that's absurd. Let me see your life. Yeah, it, it, it make, you, know, you can say it for a band, but if it's like, dude, you're a secretary, or yeah. you're just, you know, you're being excellent, you're loving God, you're, everything you're doing is unto God. It's like, you don't have to be called a Christian this or that, you know? Yeah, they want the titles. Yeah. So, okay, when you're going through all this stuff, um, there was a, there was kind of a, a little backlash or not a backlash. I would say there was more of like a, there was like the judgmental Christians were coming against you as mm. they always do. People right, that are in, right. whenever you want to do something for Christ in the world yeah. and be and you're and you're actually relevant with culture. Yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> ten years behind us like most of the Christian <laughs> right, industry. Right. When you're relevant in in like 2021 and you're actually doing ministry and you're in the world, all of a sudden you got all these haters that are like they're not Christians. Well, you know, what are they yeah. doing? They're on, they're with the they're on tour with these bands and yeah. this and that and this whole thing. And what what <laughs> how was that? Uh, I know you've talked about it before, but how was that you going through this? You're you're literally going. I'm God's call, called me here. Yeah, you're out there. You're doing what you're. We were just yeah. talking about. But then you're getting this bash, backlash. How did that? How did you feel about all that? It was here. I am when it first started. Kind of in this band. I'm, I'm okay. I'm just learning what it means to walk with God. And I feel like, dude, I feel good. Like God's. He's gonna use my life, or this is there's a there's a reason. And then not only that, I feel like okay, I said the sinner's prayer. I'm I'm gonna join this awesome great family yeah. that loves God and be a part of something awesome and holy. Mm-hmm. And then the moment <laughs> awesome and holy, <laughs> awesome and holy. <laughs> you know, as a 19 year old, you're like, hey, this will be cool. You know, be, yeah. be a part of com- of a community that yeah. loves yeah. God no, and, totally. and, and and is feeling <laughs> the way I'm feeling. They're excited. Yep. They're ready to go go to war. You know, yeah, and we're on the yeah, same yeah, team. Yeah, we're Let's all on go. the same team. And then and then the moment, uh, <laughs> you know, you you kind of meet this community and then instantly it's not your story or like let me let me see where this person's heart is it's like oh you have tattoos uh oh your your band's a little heavy 
Uh -huh. Oh, your friends are this. You know, it's, it's all these things. Because you guys, you guys were like the only ones with tattoos back then in the in yeah, the Christian we were, world. We were, we were, but we were. That's it. That's just it. It's like we weren't a part of the Christian world. We yeah, were, no. we were in the the hardcore scene, exactly. the punk scene, the underground scene, just doing our thing. And we're, you know, we're playing these shows with skinheads and we're yeah. playing with everybody possible. The, these crazy parties, crazy underground things, and then you know, believing all that that there's this community of believers behind us, just. You know, you were popping the Christian bubble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but see, at the time, I didn't even know that's what it I was. Know, you know? I know. It's like, but it's like we said before, like where God does things. I remember we were playing all these clubs, boys and girls clubs, parties, all these things. We're building up a name in in, in San Diego. Yeah. And the first time we get asked to play a, a, a kind of a churchy uh, Christian outreach venue, uh -huh. they stopped us on the first song and said that we were not. This was not of God. Uh -huh. So that w at, at that point was like, dude, okay. We played, we're getting known in San Diego playing all these clubs, bars everywhere, and they're digging the sound, they're digging our band. But the first time we do a Christian thing, they're like, this is not right. This is not so, of God. So again, <laughs> it was, I wasn't angry at it. Yeah. I just was like, oh, you know what? We're not supposed to be here. Yeah, confirmation. And it wasn't even until later that you, then, then you did see that there were bands that called themselves Christian bands. There was a scene, and it was like, you know, and even though when we, we would play with, with these bands and, and kind of enter this scene, it wasn't a place we were ready to lay our heads. It was like, dude, we, we play wherever they ask us to play. We're not, you know, we're not using the name of Jesus either to to hype up my band. Because if anything, the scene that we came from is like, you're that's lame. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. flat out. Oh yeah, yeah. You're yeah, a Christian, yeah. or you talk about Jesus. It's, it's that's lame. The only reason why they would say, oh, those guys are Christians, is because we were so um, open with our with the Faith. lyrics yeah. and. And we would talk about it on stage, and so interviews too, right? You guys, were yeah, something? always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the time, you know, there was, you know, there was a straight edge scene. There was like the, mm -hmm. there was a Krishna scene in the, in the hardcore movement. Everybody believed in something. That's kind of what made the scene. Where it's like you're screaming about what you believe in. So we kind of took it the same model. Like, well, why can't I scream about Jesus? I didn't know there would be backlash from the world or Christians. Mm -hmm. It's just something I was learning at the time. Mm -hmm. So then you start to learn, like, oh, okay, so. Because uh, to me, Jesus just saved my life. He's doing something awesome yeah. in my heart and mind and soul. And 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 then why why wouldn't the world want? They're dying to hear this news that I mm -hmm. you know they're dying to hear mm -hmm. what I have to say to them. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the world is like, ah, keep your Jesus to yourself. And then the Christians are like, ah, oh, you don't really know who Jesus is. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a conf it was confusing. Yeah, yeah. But but all the while still trusting God, saying, dude, well, we're gonna play wherever the doors open. And you know what's rad is, w as you say that, I remember that time when we were in a Cornerstone for that festival. Where, mm -hmm. Was that Ohio or Bush something? Bushnell, Illinois. <laughs> Illinois. We were out there, and this, I remember this guy came up to me, or us, saw you and came up to you because you just shaved your dreads. So they were like, is that sunny or what? It's kind of you know, <laughs> yeah. about a year after or something like that. And uh, he was like, hey, man. He's like, I got held up at like gunpoint by some skinheads. Yeah. And... The, basically, they, I don't know what he did. He did something where they were gonna, they wanted to kill him. It was basically. at a club where he popped. Something happened something, and they he kidnapped went, him. They wanted to kill Yeah, they kidnapped yeah, him. They, they wanted to kill the him. Trunk. They, they beat him up, and then they put him in the trunk, and they were talking about they were going to go basically. They were driving him out to. To, a, to go murder yeah, him, right? I remember that. And and then all of a sudden, then he, then he ended up, I think, in the front seat or in the back seat or something. No, he was in the trunk. This is the, I just was talking about this story recently. Okay. I told, I told the guys, and I thought I already told them this story, but they never heard it. He was in the trunk. They threw him in the trunk. They were taking him out the, to the woods to kill him. They were bumping Southtown on, yeah, the, on yeah, a tape. Yeah. Okay. The moment they opened up the trunk and they were gonna they were gonna kill him, he was like, wait, 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 wait. A uh, uh, Southtown POD. I, I like I like POD too. <laughs> and then he was he was trying to relate to them with like, dude, we're we're the same people. Like because yeah. at the time nobody really uh -huh. who else knew about POD. We were such an underground thing. Yes. And it was like he related to them on POD, and they literally took him out as he kind of just did his spiel. And then they, I think they untied him or whatever, and then just let him go. That was it. That yeah. was that. I couldn't remember if he was in the backseat of the trunk, but yeah, no, it was Southtown, and that literally got him out. And he's like, dude, that he's like, I'll never, you, that, that saved song. my life. And then that led him to the to the Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unbelievable. I mean, dude, I hear those stories though all the time about your music. I mean, I've been with you so many times at music festivals yeah. or you know concerts or just wherever people see you and recognize you. They like, hey man, your music, man. Yeah. I know you're singing about something, man, or, you know, whatever. Right. It's just the, the lyrics are there. And that's, that just goes to prove it doesn't matter what, and pe this is for the listeners. Like yeah. if God's lead you to do something, you just got to go do it. Mm -hmm. And you can't worry 
about I call them key, keyboard gangsters. Or actually, had made that name yeah. up. Keyboard <laughs> gangsters, where they're typing stuff on blogs yeah. or Instagram or whatever. Or even even when people, I've seen people come up to you and to me, yeah. and and you call them the buttman. It's also in my book, <laughs> Kill the Noise. Uh, when I quote you, calling people the buttman. Hey man, oh Sonny. Hey, dude, I love what you're doing, but yeah, those yeah. tattoos, yeah, everything. but the music, you know, it's like yeah, the butt man. Yeah. Um, you know, I do quote you a couple times in my book, uh, for <laughs> they sure. They can always do it better. That's just, that's the thing. Yeah, and you have these people <laughs> that then that come up here, and what they do is it's like the enemy. You know, they the enemy uses these people to come in and discourage the believers, yeah. and they like always. to fight amongst themselves when really the enemy is like, murdering and killing and getting people addicted to pornography yeah. and drugs and literally killing people and taking them to hell. Yeah. Meanwhile, you have the butt men, the yeah, squad of the butt yeah. men that are everywhere coming in and just trying to discourage people that are actually reaching these people. Oh, yeah. And your music is proof. Your mi When I say ministry is what God has called you to do, that ministry, that what the, the voice that you have to mm -hmm. the culture and through the lyrics, it is impacting people and people are getting saved over and over again and if god's called you to do something don't get discouraged by these butt men i'm telling you right now <laughs> they ain't done they, yeah, nothing exactly they ain't gonna do nothing if it, it, yep. the majority of these butt men that i've seen <laughs> and talked to yeah. butt men and women yep. they haven't done nothing the majority of them one of these butt men is basically a woman was like she got saved she used to go to corn concerts probably your concerts too got saved Went to Bible school, then to seminary, and now yeah. she's arrived. Yeah, and now she arrived. just comes against everyone that does everything. She forgot where she came from and yeah. the importance of being back in that community and, and actually letting your light shine in and having conversations yeah. Yeah. and being there. Um, yeah, the butt man, man. Don't be a butt man. Yeah. Hey, uh, listen, we're going to go to break in a minute. I do want to plug a couple things. First of all, talk about this really quick. You got something going on here. You, yeah. You, those shows. This is a 20th year of anniversary of our biggest record satellite and uh we're doing a re-release later on this year but we did we finally did a, a a concert series stream so we recorded um three shows at petco a lot of people say they think it's live but it's it's not this it's not live we just we did three sets in one day and we're gonna we're gonna spread them out so starting in may something May 17th or something. I don't know. Three sets in one Dude, day. I'm You're too old for this. Bro, I'm still hurting. <laughs> and, and not playing in a year. I'm still hurt. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, dude. That, that is crazy. was cramping up on stage the whole nine. Yeah, it was fun, though. It was so nice because at Petco Park, they had the stadium lights on. Were you know? people there? No, no, no. Oh, so it's just a full, like, it's a, like a pretty light crew. crew. Yeah. I mean, family and friends were yeah, kind of yeah. hanging out, goofing around. I didn't around. get invited. So it wasn't all the it wasn't all the family. <laughs> Shannon's in the, in the studio, your wife. I... Uh, Zach went, so you know. Yeah. I was like at my house. I'm like, well, Bro, I, I, I'm, I'm at home. I don't got nothing going oh, on. Dude, I, I don't know. I'm you just so joking. I know. I, I literally, got, I literally I was in in the rehearsal studio nine days prior, uh, from ten to seven with the yeah. guys trying to learn songs we hadn't even played in twenty years. So it was it was a wild that two weeks. Is, yeah, that is. Gnarly. But it was it was it was stressful, but it was it was fun. It's all yeah. behind you now. Yeah, it's all Dude, that's me. crazy. Three shows. Yeah. So we're we're wrapping that stuff up and then we'll we're gonna they're gonna be streaming uh, sometime in May. Okay, so yeah, I just reposted it on my story. Cool. Um we'll get that on the Whosoever's too. So uh, did you give them the dates? May thirteenth, May twenty seventh, and June tenth are the three premieres? Yeah, yeah. So we're due the first one will be the satellite record, second one will be fundamental elements of Southtown, and the third set is uh rarities. And those are songs that we did from our indie independent records to just throughout our career. Well, we're gonna be uh live streaming from the Reese house. Um <laughs> I got my daughters there, dude. My son loves DJ Marshmallow. Nice. We're, we're, I'm just I'm just doing music festivals for him. Yeah, yeah. And they just love it. So my son wakes up, he goes, Marshmallow. I go, wait, marshmallow or monster trucks? And he starts bouncing his head. Marshmallow. So it's either monster trucks or marshmallows. Sick. Hey, we're going to be going to break in a few minutes, uh, or actually a couple seconds. Um, I want to plug the Kill the Noise book. Killthenoisebook.com. It's my book. It, it talks about how the whosoever started. It talks about my story of faith. It's a faith builder. It's a tool to increase. You read it, Sonny. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's raw. Yeah, it's raw format, and it'll encourage you guys. You can buy it wherever books are sold. Killthenoisebook.com, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Target, Walmart, wherever it's all sold. Buy it, purchase it, get it, give it to somebody. We'll be back in two minutes. Peace. More 
of The Ryan Reese Show. Coming up, post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. Now, back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. All right, dude, we're back. So let's plug that show one more time. So you got the show going on. You got the three albums with your band, P.O.D. You have May 13th, May 27th, and June 10th. And if you go to Sunny Whosoever on Instagram or P.O.D. website, what is it, payableondeath.com? Yep. Payabledeath.com. You can find it's a live stream, it's announcement. The Reese family, we will be streaming it. Well, like I was saying, I want to introduce my kids to music and yeah, music yeah. festivals and and just all these these cool, you know, sports. And I just I want to get them in that whole in, environment, yeah, yeah. you know. For sure. Dude. So it's and they just love it. Like I was starting to show them music videos and they're just like Yeah. Cause you know, they're watching they're very limited on on screen time. We right, have right. like it's like 30 minutes a day, or I think now we do 30 in the morning and then or 30 like after they do their first stuff and then it's 30 in the evening mm -hmm. like after around dinner time but i'm like instead of watching cartoons let me show them some music videos yeah, and different skating, things surf, all yeah cool oh, Mo stuff. monster trucks is a, oh, is a, is a hit in our house <laughs> but yeah i want to show them this stuff and they're just like blown away because yeah, they yeah. We, we've we've kept them away from screen time because right. we don't want to be stupid right yeah, yeah. so we're now as we're showing them key things like we're like we have limited time let's show them like cool things yeah that will get the creativity going. I think little Evie, little Evelyn, she's like the little artistic, like That's what's up, she's dude. gonna she's, she's gonna do something. I don't know what. She's all into it. Like yeah. I showed her, I put on like a some EDM music. She disappeared, came back in her, she came back with like um 
uh, a rainbow uh, or no what was it like a um, it was like a rainbow uh, um, uh, mermaid um, swimsuit uh, a beach ball <laughs> goggles colorful. on her head and some like crazy boots yeah, yeah. I'm like she's like ready to she's ready for the the, the music festival I don't know what the heck's going on. she just has it in her blood and then my son's a he's I guess Crystal's like he's mini you he just yeah pff, just like you anyway so Dangerous. Let's, let's get the we'll be streaming the uh, the POD event I, awesome. I can't wait this is gonna be actually their first like rock like oh, music right to, to hear you know yeah, yeah they've been doing the EDM thing yeah but now oh, it's we're gonna introduce them this so this is gonna be dope Heck yeah, man. all right before the break we were just talking about how here you are, you're in, you're, you're a Christian, you're in a band, uh, POD, which is stands for Payable on Death, which mm -hmm. dude, that name is too hard. <laughs> it's too hard. Payable on Death. Cause it's always like POD, but yeah. man, that name is just too sick when you, when you say it out. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you're, you're a Christian, you're out there and your, your lyrics are impacting people. You're, you're hearing people's lives being changed. Uh, what else you're, um, oh, but then the, the, the Christians, like the the, not all Christians because there's a lot of Christians that love you and, and oh yeah, pray for you, but there's just like the sect of the Butman that we were talking about, and if you want to know about, more about that, you can read the book. It explains a little bit more, but just these people that are always coming against. They discourage. Like discourage. They, they're they, discouragers. They, they discourage you. Um, you know, and we and we've walked through with head and those kind of guys where yeah. they just always discourage. Like, you know, you're n you're never doing it right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They they the way they think you're supposed to do it, but it's kind of like you said when. You know, you know, you have that call, and it's like you just have to trust God that I'm doing the right thing. You don't always get the confirmations. You know, we would play. You know, it's like when you play bars or clubs, and mm -hmm. you, you know, you're kind of doing what you, you know, you believe you're supposed to do, and then you know, it's it's not like you're doing an altar call or people are coming yeah. forward and falling on the ground and giving their life to the Lord, but yeah. you're trusting that you're planting seeds and it means something. And you know, in almost 30 years of doing this, I'll still. Uh, meet a guy at a show and he'll be like dude i saw you guys in san diego you know 25 years ago i was sitting in the back of this mm -hmm. club mm -hmm. and you guys planted seeds in my life and then he'll go on to say all the amazing things that god has done in his life so far so it's always a confirmation that dude you were doing what you're supposed to be doing you know but even like when there's there's a lot of albums that we've done you know when i was it could have been some of the darkest times even my own spiritual walk yeah um and then always think dude is god using this as like are these lyrics right? It's those dry seasons. It's just yeah. It's is, it, is it these? Is what is it? And then again, you'll you'll so many people you'll you'll meet and you're like, dude, this song, mm -hmm. it spoke to my life, and and then I, then I know it had to been God because mm -hmm. I was searching again, searching again, you know, mm -hmm. during that time, mm -hmm. but God, you know, He still He still uses it. You know, I want I want to talk about two things. Mm -hmm. One thing you said is you know you're saying that one guy was in the back of the bar. You played music's powerful, lyrics hit. Yeah. It's the same. It's just like when you play worship, it's the Holy Spirit just works through the vessel, right? It's yeah. the same way that we're, it doesn't matter what kind of music you you write, but that guy got seeds. But also, I'm gonna quote uh, Lacey Sturm. Mm -hmm. She wasn't even a Christian. She was in the back, very back at some stadium you guys were playing at, mm -hmm. in the very top back in the nosebleed. Yeah. And she says when you came and started playing, she felt like this presence, like just give her a hug. Yeah, yeah. She just felt I love loved. that story, dude. And that's that's the Holy Spirit is like when that you're story. vessels of Christ and you show up, He just does. He, his presence just yeah. comes, so you don't but, have to worry. But th that, that's the thing. It takes <laughs> it takes the pressure and the burden off yeah. you. I I think what happened when Christians were coming against us at the time. It kind of actually, it kind of pushes you to do what God's not calling you to do. It because then you're trying to please them, yeah, instead of pleasing God. So mm -hmm. it was like, you know, when we go up there, you feel like you have to say something, you feel like you have to do something. So it's very contrived. It's very mm -hmm. led by someone who's standing there judging you. When God is saying, "Dude, go, go up there, play the music I gave you, love, love the people, and and dude, let me do the rest." And to me, that's easier because it's like I don't have the pressure of. You know, trying to sound right or say the right words or being this minister or you know whatever. Yeah. It's like, dude, God just gave us music to play, mm -hmm. and but even now, every time we go up, you know, or say we played Ozfest or we do all this stuff, I know I'm not going to go up and give an altar call. Like, I, why that's not? Just, yeah. <laughs> You'll get booed off the stage. You you'll know, never, you know, you'll never play the music yeah, festivals and ever that's again. The thing is, a, a wise guy once told us before when he saw us playing the clubs, he's like, dude, I see you guys are picking up uh, this momentum in San Diego, you're playing all these places. But he also saw how very aggressive we were. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the time we had a song like Abortion is Murder, you know, it's very yeah. hardcore in your face, a lot of stuff. We would say things that were very kind of militant about yeah. our faith. And, you know, we're still learning. And this guy, you know, he, he, 
he told us, he said, man, you guys are playing in places that I'll never get to, and, and most Christians will never get to. And he said, kind of view it as, as, as you're a guest, and they're inviting you them into their home. If you come down and burn the place down, you'll never, ever get invited again. Mm -hmm. So we saw that. So he just said, if I can encourage you in one thing, he's like, just lead in love. Because we were, we came in, it was like, yeah. I, we, we always felt like we had to fight for Jesus, you know, yeah. or defend yeah. Jesus when that's not the case. I well, think that goes with all Christians. With, with everybody, yeah. You, you, yeah, you know, or you feel like you, you know, whatever, you want to prove a point, statement, yeah. whatever. But the more we try to, uh, to lead in love, and that mentality of like, you know what, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm thankful that they're letting me play this club and this bar, and I do hope they invite me back. Yeah. So, so what we need to do is be excellent in the music. Yep. We need to we need to be cool. Mm -hmm. You don't come in there and just say for the sake of burning it down for the gospel's sake, and then it's like, okay, that's the last time you'll ever be there. So that's not why. That's burning bridges. Yeah. So we yeah. we learned, and we learned through records. If you see the progression of records, it's just the way we said things, you know, and the way we we tried to be more universal with it, so that people would would listen to it first, mm -hmm. you know, not just say, oh, that's that Christian band. It's not mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear their music. So we were very smart in the way we did it, you know. I think that's a that's a wise thing just for everyone that's listening now is even when you go to wherever you go, like you know we, we're touring skate parks. Yeah, yeah. Um, wh it, it, anywhere we go, any place we go that's not in the church, you're you're there in their environment, especially at a skate park. It's a scene. It's like going to yeah, like you, a, you have to speak their language. Yeah, it's like you you know in mo most skate parks are in inner city you know there's mm -hmm, a lot of drugs mm -hmm. and different things so it's 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 like you're getting all the rebels of the rebels there all yeah, the outcasts yeah. that don't give a dang about nothing and they're gonna size you up and when you go in you know you gotta you they gotta see that you're the you know yeah the, they have you to are you're you. the real yeah. deal you know and mm -hmm. and before they're going to hear you and then when you have that opportunity yeah you have to like you have to like actually show that you care and you want to hang out with them it's yeah. not you're just coming to close the deal and then when all the barriers break down like we do at the skate park then you're able to share with them, but in love. But if you if you don't go in there and share with love, you're not going to get invited back to these music festivals. And I've no, seen yeah. you at all. I mean, we've been in Australia on tour. We've been all over the United States, in South America, different places. But you have a place in that in the in, in that's that's where God has you in the mainstream. And I've seen roadies. I've seen band members. Yeah. They'll pull you aside. They come talk to you because. You've been in there with love, and even if, say, if you never ever, uh, you know, did altar calls from stage right. or anything like that. Let's just say you never talked about Jesus your whole life from stage, okay? But God has had you there. Yeah. But the amount of ministry that you've been doing backstage is with individuals alone. And I'm not saying you haven't, but I'm just right. saying with the amount of ministry you've done with individuals alone and people, if the Bible says all heaven rejoices when one gets saved, yeah, yeah. if that's always our quote in the Christian world, yeah. well, if just one gets saved, <laughs> yeah, yeah. all the angels are going to rejoice, you know? So yeah. back on people that are like, well, what if he's never done any of this? I'm not saying you haven't. Yeah. But dude, you've had a lot of ones. Yeah. You've had thousands of ones. And I look, I, I, <laughs> that's again when I know that it's real because I'm yeah. not um, beating anybody over head or I'm not, I don't have an agenda, you know. But, mm -hmm. but even, you know, when we go back to scripture and you, we're talking about learning about Jesus, you know, whenever I read about Jesus, um, he was, he was the king of relationships. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, he wasn't just solo. It's like he built relationships and, and, and in those relationships, you build trust. And so, especially, you know, for me being in the rock world, most of these guys, have, they've already fed up. They've had their bad experiences. They were raised in Christian homes and they want nothing to do with God. So you kind of have to flip it on them. It's like, well, you know what? You've already heard it all. You probably know more scripture than me because you were forced to, to study it when you were a kid. You know what I mean? Living in your strict Christian home. So now it's like they already know that I'm a believer. It's like now how much can I just love them, be their friend? You know, not be judgmental, you know, and, and just see that they really care. And then, then once they know they know you, in which they do, I built relationships with rock stars for almost 30 years. Yeah. And then they're the ones who are like, it's, we're, we're brothers now. And then, so then, um, you know, my Jesus has more credibility in a way where it's like, okay, I want to know your Jesus, Sonny. I don't want to know the Jesus that mm -hmm. I thought or that I grew up on or, you know, this whack dude, you know, that's saying this or that about Jesus. I don't trust that, but I trust you. And, and so tell me about your Jesus. And those, again, I don't, I don't knock on their door. Hey, can I, or their bus door. Hey, can I tell you about Jesus? Yeah. 
They just come because they see your because life. Because it's like, dude, we're, 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 we love each other and we're friends. Yeah. And they know I genuinely yeah. care about them. Exactly. You know, so. And I've seen that over and over and over again. And it's, it's such an amazing thing. And, and, and that's why it goes back to like, we can't, we can't go over, I carry our lives about what everyone else is saying because mm-hmm. no one knows the, the back story. Yeah, yeah. No one knows what's going on in people's lives behind the scenes, what's yeah. happening, you know? And, and, you know, I've, I've, I've talked about many artists that we know of how, man, I've seen God use these guys and the, the stuff that you don't see. Cause you know what? Yeah. The bottom line, when you're backstage yeah. and you're talking to people, there's no camera. Yeah, no one's like, gonna see you know, that. Yeah. You're not gonna be filming these these yeah. these these private events. You know what I mean? That are happening. These these cool little stories. And when you relate it to Jesus, uh, he was there. We had that famous story of Jesus hanging out with the tax collectors. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, being that. Then you have the Pharisees. They brought the girl that was in adultery. Yeah. The the sinner. <laughs> you know, well, Jesus. Well, what do you say? And, yeah. You know, he's like, well, whoever doesn't have sin, cast the first yeah. stone. You know, and then he exactly. just basically, what does he tell her? Go and sin no yeah. more. It's like, he didn't have this harsh. You know this thing on 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 sinners. He was very graceful, and he he would yeah. just to be clear, he'd be like, "Go and sin no more," yeah. but like, God loves you. Like, I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not, I'm not coming to judge you. And, and the scripture says that Jesus didn't come to the judge the world; he came to yep. save the world. So if we come with that, if we gotta always as Christians keep that mentality, that we always have to remember that we're nothing, we're sinners saved yeah. by grace. And and when I start getting judgmental, I uh, if I if there's like thought process starts happening. Or I start thinking I'm too cool for school, or yeah. like God, man, Ryan, you're you're you know Satan puts those thoughts. You're you're doing pretty good stuff. Yeah. Like yeah, <laughs> you're like I gotta, I, you know how I ground myself. If that stupid thought yeah. ever comes in my mind, and I'm just being transparent because we're all humans, yeah. and these little stupid, the I, I call them these fiery darts, or or these little footholds that the enemy wants yeah. to get in because he wants to get you thinking you're dope. Oh, you're yeah. not yeah, dope, yeah. right? And what happens is I always think about that time when I'm in the hotel room or not in the hotel room. I was thinking about that time. I was at my friend's house, which is now dead. He died from a drug overdose. And I was at my friend's, uh, I was at his house and I was, I was, had money, house, car. I mean, I was living my dream in, mm-hmm. at Circa. Like everything I ever wanted. I wasn't, yeah. a, I wasn't a millionaire, but I was living like a millionaire yeah, because yeah, yeah, all yeah. the company yeah, was paying for, for everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we had the millionaire lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but dude, I was there and I was drunk. I was drunk and I was empty and I was, I was high and I was empty still. It's like all these yeah. things that you, people do to fill themselves to fill like that, 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 cause we have this emptiness in us. Yeah. And I remember just sitting there and I was like, I'm empty. I'm, I'm, I'm not high enough. I'm not drunk enough. And I was like, well, what do you have? What do you got anything else? And he's like, I got crack and, and, and heroin. And I just put it together and I just started smoking it. And I'm just like, here I am in this place. And I remember just thinking, Dude, I am so. I think I even shot up something too. I think wow. I shot up some. Oh no, I didn't smoke. I shot up heroin and 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 coke. That's what wow. it was. So here I am, yeah. drunk, high, shooting up coke and and heroin in one shot. Like yeah. that's like people don't do that. You stuff. don't do that. Yeah. And I'm just thinking to myself, God, I'm so empty right now, yeah. and I could just die, and I just don't care about nothing, mm. and that's. And, and I, the reason why I say all that is because anytime I start thinking I'm something, yeah, I always go back to that moment because that's that grounding moment that I always. realize I'm nothing, dude. dude. I'm, you know who Ryan Reese is? I'm that guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm that guy. For sure. That's who I am. That's everything I did in my life and every, every, all everything that led me to this moment that I became that guy. That's where Ryan Reese, yeah. my heart, yep. will get me. The heart. The Bible says our heart is deceitfully wicked. Mm-hmm. Who knows it? Yeah. God knows it. And that's what always grounds me is I always take myself to that moment. And, and also, you know, the, 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 the side note of that is, you know, fast forwarding to when I give my life to Christ, God forgives me my sins. And then I end up in that moment in the dirt in the garden of Gethsemane. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that prayer and I'm like, God, here I am. Now, this is yeah. me when I'm fully repentant and I'm just like, God, here I am. I'm so sorry. I'm nothing. Yeah. How would you use this dirty sinner, this guy that you saved? What would you do in my life? And you were there with us. You were in the garden too, saying a prayer in the dirt somewhere doing my, else, doing my own, and doing it, my own thing with God. Yeah, yeah. and you're, you're, and, and God did something cool yeah, yeah. with me, and He's doing yeah. something cool. And 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 there you are. You're in the garden, and you call those prayers dangerous prayers. Yeah. We have like nine minutes left. T- tell us about these these dangerous prayers in closing, because we're going to continue the show. I want to. Yeah, 
I want to do another show with you, and I want to continue because you've been on tour, uh, touring again with the Whosoever's, <laughs> and and doing the, your thing. You're the co-founder, um, so we're gonna talk about that in the in the second show for this next weekend. But um, tell tell me about 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 some because uh, we're just kind of closing here. Like, tell me about these dangerous prayers that you make that yeah. how they've impacted your life to to where you're at now. What's it's uh, I mean, just going back to what you were saying real quick. Um, yeah, I, I think even uh, for me. You know, when 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 God found me and I was in this outside this hospital, it was all before any music. It was before any success, any type of celebrity, and um, and so I don't I don't identify myself with any of that. Even though that was awesome and mm-hmm. changed my life in some radical ways, but I always see myself um, in that parking lot of the hospital, just saying, God, if you're real, come into my life. In the dirt, and I'll, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> in a dirty parking lot, mm-hmm. and I'll never. I'll never not be that guy, and and I don't. I, that's the guy I want to be, you know. And that's I think how when the Who Servers formed, same thing, taking a break from music and saying, God, I don't, I don't identify with this music, you know, with with rock and roll. It's like I'm, I just want to be that that kid that was 19 that was so dependent upon you and so desperate for you, that I'll, I don't forget that, you know. But then being in a rock and roll band again. Yeah, Great times, all this good stuff. You, it's easy to forget to forget that yeah. person because now everybody treats you like a rock star. Mm-hmm. So you know, you you go through your moments of pride and arrogance, and you know all kinds of stuff, mm-hmm. struggles, trials. But when you can just get back to that person of like, dude, I was. This is who I am. I'm crying out to Jesus, saying, I, "I need you," or "I don't. I'm lost without you." And then that'll that'll keep you grounded, you know. But. I think about I think about uh, as you're saying that all the stories in the Bible of the Gospels, you know, the pride and arrogance. You got Peter, you know, pulling out the knife, mm-hmm. cutting off the, the the guy's ear, like, "What's up?" You know, uh, "Don't worry, Jesus, I'll never leave you." Yeah, yeah. All this, and, and and that's why the, all that stuff's in the scriptures is because yeah. we're all human, and we all go through these highs and lows in our yeah, life. Great intentions, success. <laughs> yeah, great intentions. But then the enemy comes in and likes to put that pride in yeah. and here and there, and that's the the how we have to constantly keep navigating through life yep. with with Christ is God uh, he raises us up he brings us down he takes us into those desert experiences mm-hmm. but then in those desert experiences so much fruit is produced but yeah. and you feel it's so dry and you're like I feel like I'm dying here yeah. like what the heck am I doing here <laughs> yeah. God can you even use this yeah. like are you even using me yep. right now in this this desert season yep. but all these man I went through a lot of this stuff it's, recently. A, it's a process yeah it's, it's a, a process, process. But it's not a fun process but this is how God, this is how God does it. It's just like, you know, we've heard that story of the, like making a sword. Yeah. You know, you put this, the steel into the fire, it gets it red hot. Yeah. It, 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 then you pound it out the, yeah. the, the infirmities to shape it. Yeah. And you it's not a sword. It, it refines it yeah. into this gnarly weapon that a knight ends up using <laughs> or a barbarian or whatever, or a Viking <laughs> that uses to slay. Yeah. And that's, that's what God uses. That's what he does with us is he takes us to these, these refining moments. And that's what he's done with you. Even like from the beginning of your career, as you gave your life to Christ, all these refining moments, pride, yeah. no pride, humbling, rock star, yeah. money, you know, all these different things of, and then desert experiences. And now, you know, and, and just, you know, sitting here with you, just these stories and this wisdom that just comes from you. You would have never, you wouldn't be where you're at now being able to say these things yeah. unless you've been through all this yeah. stuff. You were saying that earlier too, like some of the butt men's, like they tell you how to live their lives. Like I've, I've been walking with God for so long that all those same people that were intimidating at that time and, you know, because they know how to walk with God and I don't, right? Mm-hmm. Well, when you are been walking with the Lord for so long, unfortunately, you see a lot of those people fall off. They were talking so much stuff, you know what I mean, or or, or yeah, yeah. this is how you're supposed to do it. But then when you know when their season came or their their road got got windy and crazy, they just stopped walking, you mm-hmm. know. So, you know, bro, again, yeah. we walked with God for so long. You just you you try to learn as many lessons as you can, mm-hmm. and not be one of those casualties that, you know, just decided one day like, dude, I'm done, or or make this huge mistake. It's like it's a constant walking with God that. Um, but dude, we say it all the time. We're, dude, we're not, not perfect, and yeah. I think that's what humbles us. Where it's like, dude, God, you still, you think I'd have it figured out at this point yeah. in my life, but yeah. <laughs> but you're still gracious enough to to yeah. to walk at my pace, you know, yeah. things, which is a beautiful thing. Things up, uh, and that's the thing is like, 
like I'll tell people because people are like, oh, well, what do you think about this guy? Or this, yeah, you know, they, they'll look, and I'm just like, guys, everyone's in a different place in their walk. Like, you know, I'm in a different place in my walk than with my dad. Yeah. Then you, you were a Christian way longer than yeah, me. Yeah. I mean, you, you're, you're in a different place. Head's in a different place. Yeah. Um, Lacey's in a different place. And we all come from different places. Yeah, yeah. So there's, you know, the gospel's the same. The word's there. It, it, it's a lamp to our feet. He leads and guides us through his Holy Spirit. But yet we're all in different. And Oh, and, and on top of it all, we're all in different seasons. Yeah. <laughs> we're in different seasons yeah. right now. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Like some people, it's funny because I was talking to someone the other day. Oh, it was Christina. Yeah. She's like, oh man, I'm in this great season. I got this horse. You know, you yeah, know, Christine, yeah. I got this horse. Just I got a few months ago, she was wrecked. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were, remember we were praying for the horse. Yeah, yeah. We were praying for the, the little uh, condo she, yeah, yeah, or yeah. like the little back house. Just a place to stay. We were praying for all these things yeah. for her, and she got them all. Yeah. And she's like, oh man, dude, this church is amazing. I'm getting <laughs> fed. I'm being used. I got this con, I got my condo. I got my, my horse, like everything. And she's been through hell. Yeah. Okay. And she I'm like, it. I'm excited for it. That's our yeah. home girl. I'm like, like, go. But she's like talking about how rad of a season she's in. And I'm in this desert <laughs> experience. And I'm literally in my mind, I'm like, good for good you. For you. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Uh, I'm, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy that you're doing great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm blessed too, you know. You know, I'm blessed too, you know. <laughs> but then instantly I'm like, you know what? I'm yeah, like, no, life man. sucks right now. Christina, dude. I, I'm so. But she knows I've been yeah, going through some great stuff. I'm like, Christina, dude, I'm seriously happy for you. Yeah. I'm all, it's just funny because I'm just in this, I'm in the opposite season yeah. right now. It but always it, happens, dude. But, but that's the whole thing. It's like, and you don't ever know. This is why you can't just go running your mouth going off on people because yeah. you don't know, you don't know where people are at. Yeah, do you we? Know? <laughs> in our life, and as, as believers, yeah. and when you read the scriptures, it's all through there. I mean, look at the disciples themselves. They were all... Different. You got these other guys, these yep. sons of thunders dealing with anger problems. You got, you know, the biggest poser in the Bible, Judas, which is like stealing money. He's talking Christianese. He's seen hearing the best Bible studies doing his thing. He's there. Then you got uh Downing Thomas. He's scared. He's just a sketch dude. Thinks he's always gonna die with Jesus or whatever. He's paranoid. <laughs> and and then, you know, you got uh I'm trying to think of the other guys in the squad. So, Peter. you know, you got this you got the squad and they're all these different personalities, all come from different walks, they all have their different struggles. And this is why we can't judge people. We need to encourage. We yeah, just got to yeah. encourage people to keep on going because always there are people. You're going to hit that windy road. You're going to hit that desert experience. Yeah. You're going to have that death. And in when the I do, don't don't fault me for having that. I'm in the season in my you know weak I mean? point. Yeah, in my week. I'm the weakest. Yeah. Don't dude. I need you to help me not not throw stones at me. It's when so I'm, true. Yeah. It's so true. It's As Christians. Uh, we've 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 done that. I, I've I see people even when like when head went back to corn. You know, I had people. I get I was getting emails and DMs yeah. and stuff like because yeah. because because head did some interview where he's when they said he went back to coin he said blame it on Sonny like he was, he was making <laughs> so a they, joke so so blame, it on, blame it on Sonny because he told me to to do it right oh, so people yeah. I was getting from Christians mail I can't believe you told head to go back to that wicked you know, all this stuff and it was like oh dude you know or, or everybody would come against head I'm like why why come against him? Like just just pray for him. Like you don't know where he's at. You just pray for him, dude. I'm gonna leave it right yeah. there because that's the end of the show. Hey, we're gonna let's do we're gonna do next All weekend right. another Saturday next. We wanna do back to back with Sonny Sandoval, the lead singer from the band POD. Go to Pable on Death to watch the live stream for their three uh albums and go to kill the noise book.com, check it out, go to the whosoever's.com, get all the past shows, many more interviews and a lot of cool stuff. All right. Hey, that was epic. Thanks for being on. <laughs> yeah, man. We'll do it again next weekend. <laughs> Peace. Let's do it. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, Click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.